Have you heard of vulture bees? They're exactly what they sound like, bees who are hungry for meat. And there are even rumors that vulture bees make meat honey. Sounds pretty awful, but is it even true? I delved into the research to try to find out. So first of all, vulture bees absolutely do eat meat, and they'll eat everything from lizard meat to chicken meat, depending on what they can find. And like their namesake, they are scavengers. There are only three known species, and they're all neotropical. These bees are mostly black, but some of them have an orange abdomen. And since they don't eat pollen, the part of the hind leg that's known as the pollen basket is reduced in size. So this pollen basket is an extension of the hind leg with a lot of hairs on it that pollen-eating bees will use to collect bunches of pollen, and it will actually compact them into these nice packets of pollen for transportation home. And the scientific name for the pollen basket is the corbicula, which comes from the Latin word corbis, which means basket, in the diminutive. So it's the little basket. The other distinctive feature of the vulture bees is that they have highly serrated mandibles, the better for tearing flesh. The word vulture comes to English via French and goes back to Latin vultur. Vultur likely originates from the verb valere, meaning to pluck or tear. So what about that meat honey rumor? Well, it turns out vulture bees actually create normal honey. Researchers Joao Cramago and David Rubick even describe it as sweet and clear. This honey is probably made from regular flower nectar, just like honeybees make. No meat additives. But if you look inside the vulture bee brood cells where larvae develop, you find something a bit weird. The larvae are provisioned with whitish material with no pollen content. Bee larvae normally get their protein from pollen products like royal jelly, but this protein is not coming from pollen, so it's got to be from meat. Bee researchers think that what happens is that foraging vulture bees find meat and store some in their crop, their second stomach. After bringing it home to the nest, they regurgitate that food to other bees who hold on to it and metabolize it inside their bodies. This process is important for converting raw meat, which is going to have bacteria on it, into this whitish jelly that they can safely feed to the larvae. And assuming that's what actually happens with vulture bees, that process is actually sort of similar to what honeybees do with pollen anyway. So honeybees eat pollen, and inside their bodies they chemically convert it into that stuff called royal jelly I mentioned before feeding the secreted jelly to their larvae. Time for a royal jelly etymology break. Royal comes to English from Old English royal, which itself comes from Latin regalis, meaning related to kingship, from the word rex, meaning king. And these words come from the Proto-Indo-European root, reg, meaning to move in a straight line or to lead. And this root is also related to words like rectangle, right, and rich. Jelly comes from Old French gelé, which meant a type of semi-solid food product, but can also mean a frost, as in something congealed in the cold. The Latin origin is gelare, meaning to freeze or stiffen, and dates back to the Proto-Indo-European root. Gel, meaning cold or to freeze. Gel gives us other words like congeal, glacier, and actually modern English cold. But actually one species of vulture bees do take it a step further. Researchers who looked inside their nests found pots full of weird greenish jelly-like material. Could these be meat pots? To rewind for a second, there are three vulture bee species, all members of genus Trigona. Trigona means triangle in Greek, but I couldn't tell you why the bees have that name. So one of the species is named Hypogea, which comes from Greek roots hypo, meaning under, plus gia, meaning earth, which is a root related to the word Gaia. So Hypogea is underground. Weirdly, most of the references to these bees' nests that I could find were supposed to be in trees, so what gives? The second species name is Crassipes, a name that's used for a lot of different species and seems to be a Latin word meaning thick-footed. The third species, though, this one's called Necrophaga. Can you work it out? Necro is a Greek root meaning death, and phaga is related to eating. So Necrophaga are the eaters of dead things. Nice and accurate. And T. Necrophaga do something different from the others. 
In addition to normal honey storage pots, their nests contained pots full of dark, often greenish jelly that was full of bacteria. The researchers who found the researchers who found this suggested that T. necrophaga transfer meat into these pots where symbiotic bacteria destroy the harmful microbes and toxins and render a healthy jelly that can be fed to the colony. And so this process is a bit like how humans use bacteria and enzymes to process milk into cheese, making it safe for long-term storage. So the bees have honey pots and they have meat pots, but there's no evidence that they mix them. So meat honey has not been found yet. So I was looking for pictures of vulture bee nests and I found this wild photo. So first of all, this is not a vulture bee nest. I couldn't find any pictures of those, but it is a nest created by relatives of the vulture bees, another species from genus Trigona. Here, they've nested inside an artificial frame made by people who keep them for their honey. Still, the nest looks kind of like something from Alien, don't you think? At least compared to the nice hexagons you find in honeybee hives. But there's nothing too freaky happening here. As far as organization goes, stingless bees just tend to be a bit more freeform in their nest patterns. So what about the color? With all the lead up from this video, you might assume that somehow meat got into the wax to make these weird dark tendrils. But again, not vulture bees, and actually the dark color probably comes from resin instead, from plants. So while honeybees use mostly pure beeswax as a building material, bees in this group, the stingless bees, tend to mix their wax with plant resin. Their main building material for honey pots and brood cells is called ceramen, which is made from resin plus beeswax. In medical terminology, ceramen means earwax, coming from the Latin word cera, meaning wax. And bees also patch up their nests or seal cracks with another mixture called propolis, which is comprised of resin, saliva, and sometimes wax. The word propolis is of Greek origin, and it comes from pro, meaning for, and polis, meaning city. So in other words, material for defending the city. Bees will also use resin for itself. Bees will also use resin itself as a defensive material. They often build a wall called a batumen around the inner structures. And batumen comes from the Latin word bitumen, meaning asphalt or pitch, and probably originated in the Celtic word betu, meaning birch trees or birch resin. And the word resin itself comes to English directly from French resin, from Latin resina, from Greek retina, meaning pine resin. So Trigona beehives, not scary, but an amazing use of a variety of building materials. Vulture bees are members of a large group of bees called the tribe Meloponini, the stingless bees. Species in this group are prized for their honey and have long been used for this purpose by the Maya people of Central America. The ancestors of the Meloponini and the Apini, the honeybee tribe, diverged about 85 million years ago. And there's lots of bees out there, but the Meloponini and the Apini are the two with the most complex forms of social living, with lots of behavioral division of labor, and with morphologically differentiated queens and workers. But their common ancestor lived a comparatively simple social life, with simple forms of eusocial living that are still seen in creatures like bumblebees. So, in simple eusocial bees, there's a dominant queen who's larger and subordinate workers who are smaller, but the colony's activity is less strictly organized, and the behavioral roles can be a bit more fluid. As near as I can tell, the word meloponini comes from meli, meaning honey in Greek, and pon, meaning to put, and the ini ending is given to the taxonomic classifications of the rank tribe. So, I think meloponini are the honey putters. I'm assuming because of all the honey pots in their nests. I'll end by pointing out that bees are just a group of wasps that started eating pollen instead of meat. And the vulture bees are just a few species who got tired of their vegetarian lifestyle. As an ex-vegetarian, I relate. <laughs>